Hello everybody and welcome to another Cruel Seas tutorial. This time we go to the Kriegsmarine. We got a Verpusten boot, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. But it's got some interesting dazzle camo and I also wanted to give uh, these guys a try here. Just for the heck of it because I know people are looking for substitutes for the Reaper liner and clear paints. And I think we got one for the brown liner, this one for the blue liner. And let's see, I think the this one, good for the sepia liner there. And there's some other combinations to take care of the red liner too. Now I'm going to actually bring up my reference picture, make this a little bigger here, or a lot bigger. So you can see we got the dazzle camo on this, which is really nifty. But see the rust effects. Check that out underneath some of the platforms. And I thought maybe we'll give that a go with the contrast paints too. It, that would be mixing them with regular paints. So we're going to try a few different things. So yeah, if they have a Verpustin boot, or Verpustin boot, we'll try that. Now at, at times I'm going to make these references a little bigger here so that I can see and you can see. So, you know, if I'm doing these platforms here, I might have the reference sitting over there. So just be advised if you see those pictures moving around, that's why because I need to see it too. I got myself a nice little window here to work and the idea is we are going to use the contrast paints to do those initial glazes. Now I did want you to see for those of you not familiar with Cruel Seas I believe you've got six different fleets now Royal Navy, US, Japan and Italy, Kriegsmarine and Soviet Union also have some aircraft too. Gonna try and do some of the aircraft as well. Now I did manage to find a few pictures of this, so you can see there's a black and white one right here. It is an odd looking little craft. And here's another one again with the dazzle camo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw those contrast paints into these little containers. Just little plastic things, got them off of Amazon designed for watercolor palettes and these are little inserts there some of them actually come with uh, magnets that you can put on the bottom if you have a metal tray so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour the paints in here you know just I'll give you a little example how that's going to work here now in the past I have used the little pipettes to do this but this actually is far more efficient. There's basically zero waste. Even with the pipettes, you get some waste. So there's your wild wood. Let's do this with the Leviathan Blue. So especially if you're going to use a wet palette, it's really handy. So we'll pour this in. You can imagine this is what we're going to use to make some of those grays. So there's that. But we are also going to utilize some regular paints and I'll just try and keep this as much GW as possible I may have to use some Reaper paints here and there but again the whole idea of this was to try and make this so that you don't have to run out and get Reaper paints yourself and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna start hitting this with those initial glazes here and we'll see what we can build from that for our dazzle camo we'll be right back We've got the paint sitting in the palette now. We've got the purple one, the green one, and then we've got our blue and brown. I think it was, you know, what's with the purple and green? Well, actually, you mix the purple and green together, you get some interesting grays. And that's what we're after here, lots of different grays. Brush that I'll be using, this is from Hobby Lobby. As you can see, they are not terribly expensive. Twelve of them in here, four ninety-nine. reason that I use these, and I did this... Gustus on the other Gabbiano class Corvette. Once these have been worn down a little bit, you can see we get a nice little filbert brush right here, but yet it also has a chisel edge on it. That can be really handy when you're doing the, the rust effects or whatever, when you need to have a nice soft brush that holds a lot of paint. So that is something we are definitely going to utilize down the line. Now let's get this started. We are actually going to take for the deck here, we're going to use some of the snake bite leather. And we're just going to mix this in now. 
you can put a little bit of water in here. Really, if you got the contrast medium, that's not a bad thing to have. We're just going to throw this in on the deck. Now, if you remember from the Gabbiano class Corvette, we used the liner paint, and then we basically wiped away a lot of it. Well, we're not going to be doing that with this. These paints really don't work quite in that way. Now, keep in mind, the whole idea of these is it's very different from the prescribed method that GW says to use. We're using these very much like we use the Reaper liner paint. So if, if stuff gets on the underside of this here, as far as the contrast paint goes, I really don't care. We're just sort of indicating some initial weathering here. And again, this is the deck surface. We're going to go with more of the, the grayish colors. I am going to look to see what did they do with the lifeboats. Are they just uh, light gray? What, what did they do there? Not quite sure. And this is also not the final color for the deck. You're going to be adding more. Again, with that mixture of the regular paint and the contrast paints. Similar to, again, what we did with the liner paints and the clears. Now, I suppose if you really want to be super careful about these type of areas, well, you try and paint these before it's assembled. But I got to tell you, that's not the easiest route to go because then you're still going to have to try and assemble that later so just for ease of use we just went ahead and said you know what and add a little purple to that just going to assemble these and fire away see what happens because remember I intend to go back over all of this stuff so I don't care if the gun ends up your your aircraft mount here ends up a little bit just on the brown side. It's okay. It's more important just to get something there. More important just to have the primer covered. And, you know, you want to, you could wipe some of that away. It's, like I said, I would not, wouldn't really fret yourself over that. And, uh, let's see. Brown liner, sepia liner is probably, if you're looking for the Reaper equivalent here, must be the ship's wheel that I see right here. At least I'm going to assume that's what it is. All this is, like I said, is just it's a little bit of something we can build off of with the subsequent layers. I'm even going to just hit the crew here because just stand within the lines at this point that is not it's not necessary we're going to be going over this it is going to be like I said mixing these with the regular paints it makes this interesting semi translucent color which you can depending on how trans translucent it is the more of this underpainting it's going to show through. So I know at times this may wander off camera. It's sort of a complicated shape. Actually, this is probably a lot more complicated than the Gabbiano class Corvette, which is a little bit bigger. And that tutorial is, uh, I'm going to link that to this in the well in the end screen but also in the description uh, I'm gonna have a few other things in the description too and I've got most of the actually I got all of the Soviet Navy assembled and I've been painting some of the smaller was it the Bonrock Bronkrater I think that is uh, again I'm not up on the up on the Russian so much but that ship is, is, I got four of those that I'm painting. Because I think four of those comes in the starter box, or the Russian box. That's pretty nasty with those T-3485 turrets. And you know what, even here, see I'm just going to 
start to think about some what the heck. We'll already start to think about a little preliminary weathering here. Let me go over it with the contrast paints, like I said. But I got it. I'm just going to throw it there. This is where we're going to take our... Was that Leviathan Blue, I believe? Yeah, Leviathan Blue and the Wildwood. Mix that together. The more blue you put in, you're going to get a bluish gray. The more brown you put in, just the opposite's going to happen. And I'm looking for a bunch of different tones here. And the stuff that I can build off of later on. I'm even going to let some of that work its way onto the deck. You can see how we're not, not trying to be super in the lines or anything. Remember, we certainly weren't with our liner paints. We just kind of went pell-mell with those. Our mast here, now this is... It may bounce around a little bit. I did drill this down into the deck, but it's already gotten caught on one of my cameras a few times. So if this is a little bit loose and bouncy, you'll know why. I'm going to throw even a little more of the blue in there. I said this is going to look on the... It's going to look too dark for what we're doing. But believe me, that will be rectified. Now... We're talking about mixing purple and green to make a gray. We're going to do that. It's going to be a different type of gray, though. Depending on how much green or purple is in there, we'll get a few different colors. And I'm just going to throw that in here right now. It's It will eventually just kind of blend together. You won't really know that, okay, here's where we use the blue and green, and here's where we use the purple and green. Like I said, all of this, the whole point is just to get get some coverage here. And the undersides of these, I, I don't want to bog you down too much. Where I'm painting the undersides of stuff that you can barely even see. That Dazzle Camo, that's going to be added mostly with our regular paint and it is essentially just a bunch of different grays. Let's see. Just trying to get my nose into the magnifier here, see what we can do here. We'll just again hit the gun crew here. It would seem that their life that's unlike the Italian versions looks like they were brown. As I just checked out the reference and Everything that I could find about that, they seem to be kind of a tan slash brown color. We'll just we'll go with that. That's what I saw. That's what we'll go with. We'll work our way slowly aft. Let's work on the, the bridge here. And as you can see, it's just about getting some dark colors in here. That's all it is. And I don't have to worry about jamming this brush down in here, because that's we're really just shoving that brush down in there. Don't have to worry about it. It's a 35 cent craft brush, and these are pretty darn rugged. Believe me, they they can take a lot of punishment. Okay. And it's interesting, the capillary action on these. There's, I know it's supposed to be all about capillary action. I just haven't seen it nowhere near like oils. And and at some point, I will paint one of these ships in oils because that is my favorite. And I mean the whole thing, not just the weathering part of it. Now, those folks that are part of my Patreon page... They know that Series 2 was my Winter Soviets, all done entirely with oils. 
the skin tones, the uniforms, all of it, all in oils. And that was that was fun, and it just took so much less time. So I think this, believe it or not, it does actually start to take shape, even though we're being not very careful at all with any of this. Once the stuff starts to dry and it gets away from that that wet, glossy stuff, you start to see stuff that we can build off of. There is a little method to the madness here. You say, well, you're just constantly shifting your from one gray to the next. Well, that is the idea. And as this, like I said, as this dries, and, and if I was just doing this on my own, I could be a little more careful in the application and get even more interesting results. But like I said, the last one, the Gabbiano Class Corvette, that was about a three-hour tutorial there. And I'll, I'll try and, and show every last brush stroke on this, but there may be some repetitive stuff. Now, there, there's two lifeboats. Do you really need to see every last brush stroke on both lifeboats? The, the masts, is that really important to see every last brush stroke on those? Probably not. And you probably survive. Here, I'm just going to work my way in here again. If this has gone off screen at all, I apologize. This is <laughs> it is the proverbial ten pounds of salami and a half pound sack because my camera area here is is still at this point designed for smaller things than this. Well, like say Russian infantry or even vehicles. I've also got tutorials on my on the Char B well actually the Flampanzer so the captured Char B converted into a Flampanzer I've got some objective some scratch built objective marker tutorials I really had fun with those a Panzer 1 and a Panzer 2 they just scratch sculpted so check those out it, I could say you subscribe to the channel you get YouTube live sessions you'll get a well some might say a warning, or some might say a notification. Uh, this is, there's a lot of just stuff that's way down in here. I don't even know if you can see when I'm painting. I'm just trying to get at the interiors here. Now this, there was no option of just painting this in pieces, really, because I think, yeah, this is all part of the resin. The on on top here, okay, yeah, that's that's metal. But the actual gun mounts here, these towers, they are part, an integral part of the resin hull. So you don't get to well, unless you want to saw them off. It's about the only way you won't have to deal with those. So something like this. Well, I'm mostly just talking about what's going to happen next because I'm just look I'm just trying to get some dark colors in all of these places here it's not it's not rocket science if it was I wouldn't be able to do it because rocket science not my thing not that rockets are like rockets they're neat but my science is the painting. That's what I do. Now let's get a little touch of the snake bite leather back in here like we have on the other gun mounts. You can see I just liberally take all the different washes at times and use those. And if I were doing this with the Clear and liner paints, the only difference is that I would probably go in with those sponges, the makeup sponges that you saw me use, and take some stuff away. You do that with the contrast paints, though, that's 
that doesn't work so well. It only works when you do it immediately afterwards. And by immediately, I mean within three seconds. Anything longer than that, all you're doing is just tearing the paint away. And that's, that's not going to work for anybody. Now we can get into the just the starboard and port side of the hull here. I really don't care what it ends up as. Okay, mixing my two grays together pretty liberally. Because we're just going to cover all that with the dazzle camo. Uh, you say, well, why don't you just use... I think it was Black Templars, right? That's one of the contrast paints. Well, don't have it. I have Space Wolves Gray, but the lighter ones, and, and other people have noticed this too, not just me, the lighter ones just kind of act weird. I'm not not real thrilled with the lighter ones. And just work this all in here. And... Now, I may have to go back in, just like I said, off camera to fill in, because there's a spot here on the underside of that tower, that sponson, that I just can't really get to on screen. So we'll save that for later. But I think you can see now, once this stuff starts to dry a little bit, it starts to make a little more sense. And just think that was only a few minutes, about 15 minutes or so, of just slapping paint on there. And at this point, I'm just looking for areas that maybe are skipped. Doing the interior surface of, yeah, it's, it's going to be tricky. I suppose I could have left the masts off if I had, since I drilled in holes down into the surface there. I actually sort of sharpened the masts like pencils to make them a little thinner to fit my drill bit. And then stuck them down into the holes there. I think I gave them a little bit of green stuff to give them some support. I don't know, maybe I lost track of where the extra crew is. You now you got those those sets of the three crewmen. Usually an officer and a guy with a map and another guy, well, I think the officer has the glasses. All right. So that pretty well takes care of that. And see, I can even do stuff like this. Yeah, here, let's, I got this set up pretty well. So these are the kind of things. Remember we were doing this with the with the liner paints. Look at this. I'm gonna just take this away. See what we can do here. That's that's pretty nifty with the contrast paint. So we're gonna be painting over that to do the dazzle camel. But just wanted to give you a little I don't know preview of things to come, basically with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure all this stuff is dry. We'll get some regular colors out there. And I think the first thing we're going to do is just establish the, that dazzle camo pattern straight away. So we'll be right back with that. We've added some of those opaque colors to the palette. Now we've got some mostly warmer grays here. We're going to check these out. So you got this ashen gray and... Dawn stone. There we go. A little less reflection on there. We also have here's our one cool gray, this Fenrisian gray, and Screaming Skull. You wonder why I have these colors. I just happened to grab these last Adepticon. They were part of some classes and they were open. Couldn't be sold. They weren't going to be used. So we just said, you know what, we'll take them. We might use them at some point. Little did I know that I was going to use them in this manner. So let's do some, let's get dazzled here. I'm going to make my reference bigger. And I'm going to hold the ship next to it. So you can see we've got some dark panels here. We've got some light panels. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to set out some of the darker panels first. And then we'll go 
kind of work backwards from there because we already got plenty of dirks here. So I'm going to find a good place to pop this where I can see it, which I think is going to be up here. Yeah, we're going to go. Look at how dark that is. Pretty nifty. But first, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's take the... What is that? The Eschen Gray. And we can start to mix that. See, we're starting to mix it with our contrast colors there. And I'm just going to start to lay out some blocks there. They don't have to be precise. Because what we're going to do is chip away at those with their other colors. Now, here. And put a little more of this in. That gray that looked so dark, it's practically light against what we've got here. Now what I'm trying to think is, okay, we've got another little triangle here. We've got some other triangles over here. I don't know if you can see it, but you'll see it more the, with the lighter colors, how this it's this semi-translucent color. It doesn't cover everything. That's It's really neat. I can't wait to start painting some some vehicles with it. It's essentially, I mean, to me it feels like I'm using fast-drying, super fast-drying oils. I'm even doing up here on the, the bridge. Like I said, we were going we're going to indicate the rest of the shapes. It's essentially a sort of indirect type of painting. I like to call it I think I guess the art term is it's watercolor term is negative painting. So you're essentially painting what's not there. And that all makes sense in a little bit. I think oh wow, look at that. There is there's part of a dazzle pattern there. Interesting. Where there is a dazzle pattern, where there's not. Now, just like the Gabbiano class, we essentially have to make up the camo on this side. Which is always interesting. I know sometimes, especially in these early stages, the palette can wander around. So if I catch it, I'll kind of reel it in. So we're just working with these different shapes trying to space them out somewhat and yes there's dazzle here it's weird where it is and where it is not so there's oh my goodness there's some under here too that's going to be interesting there's a little more dazzle here than I thought I guess trying to disguise the fact that uh, this can shoot down some planes although it's I mean, it, it's really neither here nor there, but I just get a tickle out of, well, you have all this dazzle camo. It, it hides what it is from other ships, but, you know, from a, a plane from above might recognize the signature of this ship. So, kind of hard to hide it from the air. Just look for all those circles. So, I'm going to go with this. Now, let's see what we can do with another level of the camo here so this is that is that not the eschen gray that's the, that's that is the eschen no dawnstone sorry eschen gray is what we use now we're on the dawnstone but mm, i'm gonna go with a little touch of the wildwood here again to give it some transparency and now the dazzle pattern's gonna well at least hopefully show up and it's right around your anchor chain here. And the reason I want this to be semi-translucent is that it kind of shades itself because there's nothing more tedious than trying to shade individual chunks of dazzle camo. Hopefully what this does is it shortens that process. So there's my one little triangle there let's go for another larger shape that's going to be over here and it's going to go all the way down 
to the water line and we cut it off here. Now the way this was done essentially for the box art was as a little bit of a dirtier boat. You know, it's probably kind of in one place a lot. Just the nature of the beast. So I could see it maybe you know, it's not plying the North Sea or something like that. It's probably more coastal. I, I haven't had a chance to really get into the research now. I'm also going to take this gray and I'm going to get into some of the other non-dazzle part of the ships or the ship. I'm going to hit some of the gun shields and because like I said this is that semi-translucent paint as we hit these it's not going to cover them completely. This would be a good example here. And this sort of turtle back portion of the forecastle here. I'll just, I'm going to call it a forecastle. And if my maritime foo is off, I apologize. Used to sail all the time. Absolutely loved it. Wind and sail, the only proper way to move a ship. Unless there's... <laughs> unless it's not. So see how that totally changes those around, but it's still... We can still see that initial layer of paint underneath here. We'll do the same thing on deck. And just the more I do this... The, the more I, I'm seeing the uses for it. It's something I used to do way back in 2013. It's how I painted everything. And then I just sort of got away from it, did other materials, other techniques, and it's weird. If you keep painting long enough, you'll run into yourself, I suppose. And that's what's kind of happened here. Now we'll do this on the stack, which I'm pretty sure does not get any dazzle of any kind. But look at that. So I'm able to kind of walk my way up here. It's not a dry brush. There's plenty of paint on there. It's one of the reasons why I use the larger brushes because it lets me just work with a whole lot of paint for a long time. Now the lifeboats are essentially just white, it looks like. We're going to do a little close-up. White with actually looks like a bluish black bottom. Yep, really got to walk in a lot of these little triangles here. Okay, just don't mind me while I move my reference picture around here. And each time I do this, you know, I can can always make an edit on a shape. If I say, well, yeah, that's not quite the shape I was looking for. It's not. It's too regular. Because the whole idea is to break up the profile of the ship, not just create a weird pattern. And I also have to remember, this is the essentially the medium gray. So let's match up those two pieces. Let's grab a little more of this gray. And this I can see I'm going to go back in with the darker gray and revise that shape a bit. And I'm going to do a big old piece here on the stern. Like so. Alright. And our gun mounts. Let's get some of that on the lifeboats it's the idea is those are going to be much lighter yes but for the time being let's just use this sort of mid-range gray on those I know we mixed uh, we did a lot of gray liner on the Gabbiano class but there was some blue 
We did a lot of blue on that uh, particular ship there. This going to get less of the bluish gray. Going to get more warm grays. Almost, I don't want to say dirtier grays, but there. Now let's start to work on our dazzle scheme for the bridge superstructure here. I'm going to go with one right here, like that. All the while, still reaching into some of my initial contrast colors to keep this from getting too opaque. All right, another triangle here oh let's go with this these your ear intakes here to get a little bit of the lighter gray on those and I know I'm, I'm moving kind of quick here and if I say of me flying around with this has it go a little bit off camera I apologize But this it, it just starts to take shape. You have to be willing to basically put up with it looking like yeah for a while, and then you look at it and say, "Well, you know what? <laughs> look at all that stuff that that I can see. Lots of shapes on here." And remember, we still have our lightest of the Dazzle Camo colors to go yet. All of that will make a big difference. Because look at how much lighter that is to that. Now, I'm also going to try and inject, speaking of blues, especially where the hole meets the waterline, I'm going to see if I can't mix in some of that blue there. Now, that's actually a, yeah, I need a chunk here of the mid-tone gray. Now, remember when we we did the dazzle scheme on the Gabbiano, that also was done in a sort of a semi-translucent fashion. And we were able to lighten that gradually. The principle is sort of the same here. We've just we've changed the paint that we're using. That's that's all it is. I suppose if you had oh gosh, what is it? The contrast medium. You could mix that in with with your paints. I even I actually have some of the was it the Lamian medium here I might try to use that and see what that does as far as not just thinning down the paints but giving them that that semi translucent look now what do we want to do here on the bow I'm gonna go with a with this And then we'll do the lighter color there. All right, I've got... Again, I'm just... I can go in here with glazes of, say, weathering colors. I can do that, too. We did that, remember, on the Corvette. Oh, and... Yeah, I can use water now too because while well, we we have regular paint and the regular paint can certainly be thin with water.
But if it gets too thin, I just go back and grab some of my regular paint here. Let's just go with one more shape like this then. I'll be really curious to see just how significant the changes appear once we get into the much lighter camo color. In fact, it's time to start looking around. And this is as far as the, the pattern goes. The second layer there lightens that up. Now I need to have a somewhat darker version here of this and go over the top. I want the the gun platform there to cast a little bit of a shadow. Here, and I'm even going to take that same gray. We're going to mix it with some of the snake bite leather. See how that starts to equalize. We had a few dark spots there. That's obviously where we put our secondary layers of the contrast. But oh look, that starts to get equalized. We're going to do the same thing here. We have this larger mass of darker paint. Look at that. It starts to go away. But yet it's there. It's kind of neat that it's still there. I'm going to go on the other side of this. That's why I did not worry about any kind of pooling or whatever. That is something that definitely happens with the contrast paints. I just, I've seen other people and talked to them. Now the way they're using it, again, it's more that GW style. They end up with more pooling issues because they were relying on just the contrast paint itself whereas for me that it's a it's a means to an end I guess I don't rely on it doing the contrast thing at least not to the degree that those folks are so just one quick little side interlude into the deck here And I see another area where it's gotten a little darker. You can see I'm taking the some of that deck color that we mixed. Look at that. Just that solves so many things. It really starts to clean up that deck color right there. And I'm even going to start to fiddle a little bit of this onto some of the crew. Now just for the heck of it, let's put some of our lighter camo on there. Just want to see what it looks like. I know you do too. So yeah, I mixed it with the existing stuff. Let's go with the let's go with this side. I can see we've got a connecting triangle of that right here. like so. I know there's some folks that would mask all this off and do airbrush stuff. Well, there's a lot of time spent masking. And I know I, I know some folks that they say, yeah, I could just mask that off. And then they realize just how long it takes to mask things off. And the fact that you're talking about masking it off multiple times. And you realize Am I really saving all that much time? We need ourselves a triangle here. And it's always cool when one of those goes over some sort of a porthole there. And then we've got another shape right here. Which leads into, uh, I'm just going to go like this. Let's 
to work our way aft again. And that's, uh, yeah, okay. So we'll just go like this. And remember, I think we've done it with some of the other ships too. If you got an area where it's just not as nifty as you wanted it to be, well, you can do some serious rush streaks there or whatever. Why not? It's your fleet. Ultimately, you do what you need to do with it. And I suppose this is something I talk about in my army painting series all the time. There's this idea that you just you don't have to paint the whole army all at once. You paint part of it. You get it to where it looks okay and playable. Then you you do your game, whatever. Then you paint some more on it. And, and each time you add a little more paint to it, the more it's going to start looking like a finished product. Just be patient with yourself. I think some folks, they just they want to see that army or whatever just get painted right away so quickly. And even for me, it's as fast as I go through things. It is. It doesn't all just happen at once. Believe me. So we're now we're taking that lighter camo color. We're adding it to the things like the lifeboats. We've got ourselves one more big old chunk of lighter camo here. Now let's get, let's work our way up. We've worked our way aft. Let's work our way up. Like so. All right, what do we got here? We got another chunk that goes right in here. This is where I really like these brushes because you can see how much paint they hold. I can really just paint for quite a while with these guys. I believe, yeah, we're going to continue this pattern here. Now I'm going to have to take a close-up look at these. Now let's start to think about the other other end of our boat here. We gotta we did the port side, we gotta get to the starboard side. Big old shape right here. I'm gonna do one more down here. And don't worry about that. You can see the brush strokes in there. We are just sketching this on. This is not the idea. Of this is not to have you this your your permanent final version of your dazzle scheme. It is most definitely not that. Because I might still make some changes to this. So I'm gonna let this mix in. And it's certainly not our lightest color either. I'm going to have this sort of bisect that one line. Let's go with this here. And I could just, even with the way this is sketched on, if I wanted to really make it sort of a rust, well, more of a rust bucket or whatever, then I 
could do all that streaking and, and everything else over the top of this and especially from a distance or whatever they would be just fine I know some of the concepts that I'm talking about here might be a little unusual for people that aren't used to the way I approach things but you can watch my bolt action battle reports and you can see what whole armies of figures and well vehicles terrain all that looks like essentially painted with this mindset right now my bolt action battle reports are early war it's it's France it's 1940 and I believe there are four battle reports for you to watch at this point there's a little bit of a hiatus there as I work on cruel sea stuff ironically enough so again not gonna get hung up on the the lifeboats there but I do want to yeah get that lighter dazzle color in there let's get myself a nice piece that intersects with this still working our way aft on the hull I guess it, it is really important to vary the size of these pieces. Yeah, this it's a lot of fun. As soon as I just saw the cruel sea thing out, you know, I bet you it's going to be really fun to paint those ships. Obviously, the, the larger ships just have a little more impact visually. But even the smaller, the mid-sized ships, the Italians definitely have a lot of the, the mid-sized ships, which is kind of neat. So once again, working on my lighter bits of dazzle. here since it is sort of semi-translucent so I can even take some of it away with my finger hmm yeah let's let's put another bit of this here all right do I need any other did I just kind of skip an area? Gotta look for that. Yeah, there's a few. Now, what I'll do is I'll show you. We can add to a little bit more of the skull, screaming skull, I think it is. And you want to make certain parts of the camo lighter. Well, look at that. We can. We want to make that line a little sharper. We can. And now that starts to stand out. Although I'm not going to... See how, remember I was talking about that filbert... style brush. See how that brush is flattening out? that's gonna give me that nice soft edge so I'm gonna take some of that paint away now we we can really see that brightest that brightest gray it's kind of a yellow basically a yellowish gray let's work this in here 
Now I try to keep these segments at about mm, less than 40 minutes long. So I won't be able to do all of this and still keep it under 40 minutes. But I think you get the idea. All I'm going to do is just exactly what you see here where I'm working on the latest of the camo colors here. See there? I'm not even going to make that any lighter. Why would I make that lighter? It's supposed to be in shadow. So not making it lighter. I'm making a change over there. I've got my lifeboat here. I need this light part of the camo set. Same thing here on this platform. So first we sketched it out and now we're starting to finalize it here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of some of that excess. I can even go in with some of my contrast paint there. So it must be a little bit of wet into wet. And now we've got a bit of a transition there. It's a little easier to do that when you have that a little bit of contrast paint in there. See, we can just sharpen up that line. Let's do this piece over here. Looks like it's right in the center of the screen. I'm going to grab a little more of the white or my was that screaming skull. There we are. And we'll do this one here. Add a little more to some of these guys. Little by little. It all starts to come together. Yeah, we want to shade this a little bit. And so I just could sort of scumble away at that edge there. This will be lighter but not terribly light. We get uh, another chunk of our lighter dazzle onto our gun positions here. If you're wondering what this is it's on, it's just a big old heavy container here of I think it's uh, not resin but uh, mold material so it's pretty dense, pretty heavy, nice counterweight and it just blue tacked on there. Real simple. You can see I, I just made a little change to my shape there. Hopefully, I think you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, good. See how we're thinking about some shading there and making another change. That just seems to make more sense with what I saw on other on the port side pattern. Once again, cleaning up, cleaning up those edges. All right. Yes, this is on the underside of the fantail there, but it needed to get a little bit more light. Up here on our bridge slash not counting tell well sort of all right 
this. There's a piece right here that needs to be cleaned up and definitely enlarged a little bit. We, st well, we don't even have one over here on this gun mount, on this side of it. Okay. This piece definitely, got three pieces right here that certainly need to be reinforced. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the brush, I'm going to sweep it to the side here. We're going to get rid of some of that extra paint. We're just sweeping this to the side. Using the shape of the brush itself to help me out in, in creating the so the final outline of my my dazzle there. We definitely want to get this lighter. I mean, even here, you know, if somebody saw this from a distance, they'd say, oh, wow, look at that. Now, you get closer, it's not going to have as much impact as maybe it would when we spend a, at least another hour and a half or so on this. That's the nature of the beast. You want results, sometimes you just got to put time in. You just can't quite shortcut it. So I think what I'll do before I get too wrapped up in just the dazzle scheme, we'll go on to other parts of the ship. You know, some of the gun mounts here, the, the stack, these other things, where we're just going to work on the rest of the grays. Maybe even see what we can do for some of the the crew there. Now we got these ladders and such. It's a lot of a lot of other little things to start thinking about here. I just added a a bit right here, just because. I don't know it seemed like I wanted to have it sort of connected to that piece there, that little chunk. And with that, we're going to move on now. So we're going to do some of our sort of mid-range gray. See if there's a place I can add some of that bluish gray to. And see what we can do with the, the crew members. So we're going to work on some of those secondary bits here. Now we'll be right back with that. So as I look at some of the other areas on the superstructure, I can see there's definitely some lighter colors there. It's not just those boats, but also in the stacks and some of the other stuff that's sitting out there. So I'm going to reduce my reference picture here. And it's no big deal because, there we go, we still have some of our lighter gray out here. And we're going to get right into that now. And some of these other bits. Now, if it gets too bright too fast, well, I've got that other gray that's just sitting right there. So that means we can have a little bit more of a gradual transition there. We're also going to hit our masts, too, while we're at it. So all of the, all these the vents here, the air intakes and such, those all definitely need to be lighter. Looks like, just in general, the upper surfaces here of the deck are lighter. And that's what we're going to do. These things especially over here definitely need it to be lightened up. We'll do that.
the they certainly needed to get lighter and that's that's good because that weathering really does show up better when on a, against a lighter surface uh, than a, against a darker one uh, it's obviously that's why weathering just always looks really nifty on desert vehicles and on winter whitewash vehicles because that that lighter color just really lends itself to showing off showing off your weathering I'm just trying to get this again in a position where I can see it too remember there's going to be the rust streaks down the stack and maybe even a little bit of soot there too well not necessarily soot but some scorching whatever you know what I mean we're going to get the side over here just making sure it's in the in the frame for you yeah, if you're more comfortable with the smaller brushes by all means you can use the smaller brushes you're not these aren't really rules here on any of the videos that I do I'm trying not to make it about rules well you must do this every single time or you must use this brush or this thing I really don't want to do that because it's gonna just start to be less and less fun for you so let's you know, we'll grab a smaller brush here and we can do some some of these guys here with a smaller brush so there is still a little bit of the contrast paint mixed in with this I am looking forward to still haven't actually quite decided on what mixture I want to use to do my contrast paint or for the the rust and stuff what how much contrast paint do I put in there we'll kind of find out when it happens that's another thing that I try and do with the videos is not necessarily have something that I've done a thousand times before because it can you can kind of tell when somebody's just doing something that okay here we'll show you this exact same thing again I try to do as much variety as I can in materials techniques because what if well what if you can't get the contrast paints and maybe it's not because well not like the Reaper paints where it's hard to get them in Europe it's just well contrast paints they're just kinda hard to find especially certain colors so what do you do then well for me I just I have other materials that I could easily use instead See, it didn't take long to get those pretty well established I am going to put a little bit more of the screaming skull out there and as light as that is that's still not white it's still not white so I still have more range of motion I can still do more stuff as far as adding lights see how much lighter that is now everything is kinda relative speaking of lighter and maybe using the finer brush you know here we start to clean up a few of our camo patterns because why not we can get that lightest color on them we have our lifeboats here we've got our gun mount camo there especially up here on the superstructure make some of this a little lighter a little more precise and then uh, it's, I'm just guessing that this might be a, a 
sort of thinking of it as the, the capstan, but maybe not. Might be something else. Get that a little bit lighter. Get the tops of these doorways down below a little bit lighter. We'll work on our dazzle. Here you can see I, I once I have a color going, I tend to see, well, where else can I use this? That really does help with efficiency. There's other things, too, that I want to mess around with. So we got that Fenrisian gray. I'm going to just get some of these portholes here and some of the windows. Just mark those off. Again, I've got my smaller brush out, so I can do that now. And I hope you can see it. Yeah, it looks like you can. Hopefully I didn't just rotate that out of your view. Actually trying to also not just paint in the window, but then get that little extra highlight there underneath it. So we're starting to utilize our bluish gray here. I just want to get some of these windows in place. Maybe even, let's see how that will work right here. So I'm, you can see I'm just where the water line is, reflecting a little bit of that bluish gray into the sort of the mid-level part of the camo pattern here. I'm even going to just, yeah, let's darken that down a little bit. What do we have here? Let's hit the, our towers with some lighter colors. Gonna start to work on some of the crew here. Now, whether or not you want to get into putting individual skin tones on it, that's up to you. I, I certainly did that with the Italian crew. And I really want to try that with these guys also. It depends on what I can see. <laughs> The, the weathering stage, that'll just be, that'll be one of the last things we tackle. Not really going to get into the, the decals and the flags. That's something I'm just going to, instead of using the, the metal versions, I'm just going to actually cut out some pieces of paper. Because the, the metal versions are just kind of, well, huge. <laughs> And there's kind of, they just look like hunks of metal dangling off of whatever. I, I tried using them on the Italian ships, and that's basically, I just wasn't super thrilled with those. Now, some folks, maybe they don't even have those on at all, period. No, that's no problem. You know, let's get these housings with a little lighter color here. I'll do the same on the port side. Now this other Tower mount here. I gotta get some lighter gray on that. Also on the on your boat cranes here. I guess a little little bit of weathering there can go a long ways. We also have to. 
We're missing a color here on our dazzle. And I'm going to do the same here as well. I've got plenty of the dark, plenty of the light, but none of the stuff in the middle. So I'm just going to add that right now. I think, yeah, I think you can see that now. I still have my snake bite leather here. Let's add a touch of that lighter color. Let's see what we can do to add a little bit of a deck pattern here. I think that's fairly good for you to be able to see it. And so I'm just doing a couple of these lines, and it is with that semi-translucent paint. See, just throwing in a few lines here. It just gives the impression of some kind of planking. I'll turn this around. We'll do it back the other way. You can put as much or as little of this as you want. And you we could stick completely with what we had a while back. Me, the you know, total time painting this for, for me would be several hours. I would want to spend between six and eight hours on this for me to have it where I would like it to be. You know, some folks would say, well, okay, I'll, I'll spend a couple hours on it and that's it. And I know, I think some folks may, hopefully, when you saw the idea that, well, geez, he's using contrast paints on this boat, he's just going to paint it in a couple of minutes. Well, I hope that was not the impression, because that was not supposed to be the impression. So I'm going to not quite do as much of the wood planking up there. On the bridge area. There's going to be some additional glazes thrown on this. I just want to get that a little lighter in some places. Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit more of that snake bite leather back out here. I'm just going to give some impression here of a lighter color for that for the deck there. Yeah, it's it's not crucial. Do I want to go a little lighter? Maybe. Again, sorry the camera keeps getting pushed around. I'm trying to look through my magnifier light here and, and see what the heck I'm doing. So that's given us just that extra little touch of contrast no pun intended I'm gonna just assume that this is again deck planking of some kind what do we got over here we have a I'm even going to start to think about life vests. I can see a few here. And like I said, I saw those. They were sort of a brownish gray. Where's ah, some more crew over here? Let's see if we can't. Get some of the wood in the lifeboats here. Turn this around. Hopefully you can see that one. I know it's in shadow. But believe me, it's in shadow because it's in shadow for me too. See if I can get a few indications of wood planks aft here.
Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the, at least not right with me. I have it, but just not right here in front of me. The the unit card for this that sort of gives you a rundown on the weapons and all that other stuff. I didn't necessarily want to separate that from the box. I'm trying to keep that all in one place. Okay, we're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit of a locker there. Now let's start to get some lighter gray. So I'm even gonna put a little touch of blue in that. Well, that's the Fenrisian gray, I suppose. And I can even, if I wanted to, it can make some flesh tone for the faces and hands and such on the on the crew I think one of the next things we'll tackle on this try and tackle some of the the aspects of the weathering because what I, I try and do in a semi stealthy way is to give you something where okay you were able to follow along this far and you got yourself a ship that's looking pretty good but that's as far as you could get well then okay here's the next stage that you can take it a little bit farther and add your weathering but still be able to use it to get in some games because hey that is sort of the purpose of having the chips and the rules and the dice and everything else play some games when I do my battle reports with the cruel seas it's pretty much gonna be me versus me so that's gonna be more of a sort of a tactic discussion I like to do those where I say okay let's just try this okay maybe the meta or whatever convention says do this let's try something different it's sort of what I do with the painting so why not carry that into the gameplay itself too so what we've done we've just kinda of gone through and started to make some of these bits lighter Like I said before, if you want to show that weathering, it really helps to have a lighter base to work from. Speaking of lighter, we're still finding areas here to add some of these lighter grays. on this primary platform over here definitely get some there you can see me wiping away paint here and there because why not why I have to paint over things I just I don't understand why there's this notion of well, oh my gosh there's one small little thing there I've got to strip the whole thing down and start from scratch again or you just sort of fix whatever little thing might have gone haywire. Here, let's darken that down a touch. I always have the, the color still out there so I can go back and... There. Just getting some of these things a little... A little lighter. Now let's go in with the got got these boat cranes we gotta take care of here. Ladders. And gun mounts. Just trying to work in some of these bluish grays here. 
I'll have to take a real close-up look at the guns themselves to see, well, is there any dazzle you know, painted on those gun shields? There could be. All right, I got a map over here that I'm going to lighten up. Forward edge on that. We got some edges here. I want to pick up two. This just needs to be. I don't know. I need a different shape here. That's it. It was. It was looking a little too. Like a, a repeat of the same. Shape over and over again. Sometimes I see things here that need to be straightened out or some form of correction on them. So here I just add, I felt like I needed to add that little chunk right there. So I think we've gotten those lightened up pretty well. And that's the, was that the Screaming Skull? Yeah, that's what that is. And now I can do some chipping, I suppose. Now I'm not quite sure why those would be chipped. Your, your air intakes there. Okay. I have to decide some here. I got this kind of a foggy shape right here. It's not very well defined. Let's see if we can't make it a little more well defined. And I, I could just, I may have to put some more of the screaming skull out there. And I don't want it to get too too yellow at this point. Okay, looking at that, I am going to, this is basically just some, where's my, this is just straight up white. There's nothing fancy about it. White is white. doesn't matter which company makes it. So I just added some white to the palette. I'm going to take my Screaming Skull here. Let's see if I can't get a few, maybe on the lifeboats back here. Look at that, the different, and that's still not pure white. Still not pure white, but what it is starting to do is add some texture of planks there. And I'm even thinking about lightening some of my, that lightest bit of the dazzle pattern. And I think it just, it needed that extra little bit of a boost. And I may not do it everywhere. I may not do it on the hull itself. Maybe I'll stick to more superstructure. Like that. Maybe a few places on the upper reaches of the hull here. Can you see that? Yeah, I think that's about where you can see it. Now let's do the other life point. I'm just going to take this, sweep that along. Nice broad brush stroke. And I can really see a few of these that need to be reinforced a bit here. 
what's interesting is on the Minesweeper, the M-Class Minesweeper, you can see lifeboat or not the the life buoys, the rings, and on the Russian boats. But here, I'm I haven't seen a single one yet. I've been looking for it. Been looking for those little rings, you know, paint them white with a little bit of a red accent there. I have yet to see those on here. Gonna get rid of some of that excess and but you can see I don't mind it if it's a little bit see-through because the the whole weathering phase is yet to happen. Can you see it? Yeah, looks like you can see that. I'll just do this and maybe even wipe some of it away. I can thin it down a little bit and take away some of the extra. See how I just sort of scumble that in there? Lots this one strip right here. But each of these steps, some of this stuff, it just gets much better defined. This one for sure needs a little more definition. Doing the same thing. I just watered it down a little bit. Yeah, if I've got too much in the brush, I take some of it away. And do that same thing. Right, a little bit of water. That's it. Like you do. Okay, I want to get this piece a little more defined. And here, this guy, I'm going to just say that one's in shadow and not quite worry about that. These I will get a little bit of a lighter tone on these. We've added lights in other places, so these need to catch up a bit. Okay, we got this one little piece of the lighter camo. Just going to lighten that up a touch. I'm going to take some water here to tone this down. Now we can spread all along there. We'll hit this piece. All right. That's working out pretty well. Oh, I see. And uh, right up here for sure. Yeah, we need this. I think that's going to mostly take care of our lighter color. So the next thing I'm going to do is just try and hit the some of the weathering next. It's working with a lot of the, the rust and staining and that sort of thing. We'll see what we can do with that. And then after that would be more of the sort of those final little details working on the crew and 
maybe get a little bit of skin tone on them, that sort of thing. So we'll be right back with a little bit of the weathering on this. I want to see if I can do some rust here and just some general weathering. I threw out a couple of things. We've got this the Blood Angels Red. We're going to mix that with the Snake Bite Leather. Try and make that rusty colored orange wash out of that. And then the Rhinox Hide. We'll mix that with some of our, like the Wildwood and, and the darker stuff. That'll be for some of the, the chips or even maybe some of the darker rust. See if we can do it. Got that Rhinox Hide out here. Now, let's see what happens when we mix the snake bite leather and that. To, yep, as I thought. I mean, you're basically mixing sort of a yellowish brown and a very warm red together. And yeah, now you start to get a little bit of a rust effect there. All right, so we've got that. And the Rhinox Hide, I think if we mix that with some of our darker colors, that should be pretty pretty good for some chipping there. Let's see what we can do as far as maybe some streaks here. Now I'm going to make this picture a little bit bigger. And we're obviously going to focus on the portholes and some of these upper surfaces here and the undersides of those platforms. You can see it right there in that upper right hand circle. And we're going to see what we get now. All right. I'm just going to get this out of the way here. There we go. It's going to make it that much smaller. So now we have this pretty much in focus. And this is an alternative to, say, the oil washes. Or at least that's the, that's the plan. Let's see what we get here. And it's definitely translucent. I've got myself another brush here and the idea is almost like what you would do with an oil wash where you, you throw it down and then you sort of extend it down a little bit. Let's do another another portal over here like so. Take some of this away, maybe even a bit more. Make it as translucent as possible. So that seems to seems to work out okay. Now in a previous video you saw me mostly working with the secret weapon weathering paints. I really love those, but again some parts of the some parts of the world just have a tough time getting their hands on those. So hopefully this presents a nice alternative for you. Yeah, look at that. See, yeah, that's who would have thought contrast paints as rust and weathering. Well, I figured that would work right away because it is so much like the the oil weathering stuff. Now, what I'm trying to do is on the underside of that, we're going to see if we can't Get a little bit of rust going on here too, especially underneath here. It's one way to, that's why I didn't really fret about getting colors in there because I figured, you know what, what the heck, we'll just put this rust in there. Let's, let's go over here. I'm going to get the ladder here too with some of that because why not? Now I'm going to put this on its side. Oh yeah, See, look at that. Look at what that's doing. That is a nice, nice rust color there. It can be even a little bit darker in places where you need it to be. So we can get a good variety out of it. That's nice. Let's see what we get here. because I noticed a hefty amount of rust placed in this area and then we'll try and get some streaks here too but these will be see those a little more subtle you just see a little bit of orange right there 
And if you're wondering, that's just the snake bite leather mixed with the Blood Angels red. At first I was thinking the flesh tier is red, and I realized, no, there's too much blue in that red. Look at this. Just a little bit of the rust mix there. It just makes all the difference. And especially where you have the lighter parts of your dazzle scheme, it really makes a huge difference. You can wipe some of that away. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent mix all the time. You can yeah, look at that. So that's a it, it was an experiment. I had never tried it before. I assumed that it would work like this, but you never know until you actually try it out. So we've tried it and now we know. And I'm just going to work my way around the ship and I can always add more if need be. I guess I can put this on here. Got my brush here and then I can remove some. Yeah, look at that. So it's working out pretty much the same way as if I was using the secret weapon weathering paint. So now I've got a good substitute for either an oil wash weathering type thing or even the secret weapon washes and just like I did on the other one it looks like that's good enough for you to see. So I gotta get some of that off of there we'll make ourselves some streaks there we're gonna at the base of the stack here go with some nice little weathering and a few streaks down the stack And any place where you just feel not really feeling like how your your dazzle camo came out the way you wanted, well, or even here, some of these panels, they just the lines weren't real clean. We're gonna dirty them up. Cause hey, why not? I'm trying to think too it in the terms of natural collection points. Where would something like water just sort of accumulate and cause that kind of weathering like that. But as I said on the first one, too much of a good thing is still too much. So try and be judicious with it. And I also have to think too, just based on the size of the the crew there, I'm trying to base my my rust on that because sometimes you can it can end up basically being like this monstrous <laughs> rusticle somewhere where it really wouldn't be quite that humongous. All right, let's. I'm just trying to tint the underside of that, and maybe we'll do a little bit of some rust chips along the outer edge of some of this now we've got our definitely need a some rust heading down from that and I'm and not forgetting my rhinox hide here I'm gonna mix a little bit of purple brown and blue in there so I'll darken it down here maybe even a little more of the wildwood and the le leviathan And we'll maybe think about some chips here along the edge of the gunnel here. Again, especially where you've got the lighter colors, not a bad idea. You can even do some nice some paint chips over there. Let's go back to our <coughs> I'm sorry about that rust color here. And it really has quite the dramatic impact. 
which is why you have to sort of rein in that desire to kind of go wild and put it absolutely everywhere. Certainly need some chips up on the top of these gun platforms. So you can just dragging the brush along here. This little bit makes it look less like it was painted on and more it you're shrinking the ship down or sometimes you're doing the reverse you're making it look that much bigger by adding all of these little tiny details like these and I'm even going to get a little of this here on that platform Just push it around a bit and certainly here and there would definitely be some accumulation of water underneath this let's see if we can do some streaks down yeah see how they're nice and translucent there so even if you don't want to use the contrast paints the the way I was early on I still think you could use them for this. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, look at this. And yeah, let, let's continue this out and over the side of the ship. We can do multiple layers of this also. I can take some of that away. And as I said, too much can be too much. So always keep that in mind. Just like, okay, is this thing entirely covered in rust? Like it's just hasn't moved in two years? Well, then maybe I, maybe I overdid it. I'm going to do the same thing, the underside of this platform. So we'll get some nice... Nice solid glaze in there, and then we're going to extend that down. We just took some water. You could use the contrast medium too if you have it. I don't have it, so I have to use something else instead. Again, going to hit some rust on that ladder. Just thinking of a few of these little rusty streaks so I'm gonna you know, get some some of my chips on there Let's see if we can't do some some streaks to line up with those chips I could even let some of that oh, was it Rhinox hide I think it was I could let some of that mix in with my tr super transparent rust stuff here to give it make me a little bit more darkness a little bit more opacity there we go yeah this is been waiting a while to see this i'm sure you have too it's a pretty dramatic impact in terms of a difference yeah here let's do the same thing over here I think you can see that and I'm just going to go after the edge of that a little bit tone it down now let's let's get some nice streaks on the fan tail here but first okay so this is that rhinox hide we almost do like a little bit of chipping along here remember on the frigate we used the a little bit of sponge to do the chipping here I'm just using the brush I'll just stick with that all right I'm just trying to angle this where you can see it so I've got some there and now we're just gonna pull that down 
like so. Make sure that it follows the line of the hull, because otherwise that'll be somewhat unusual. So here's where we're going to take some of the Rhinox hide. This is where we make the rust a little bit darker. Where are we at here? Good, you can see that. So that's a little bit more. Yeah, here too. See how much darker that is there? So in places maybe where you've got one of the darker bits of the dazzle and you just want to have some rust there that's maybe going to show up on it, you take that darker, that slightly darker version of the rust there. We need to get the underside of this platform just like the other side. So get my brush here that just sort of absorbs some of that. And here, see that's it's not so much a specific rust streak. It's more just see how much we can do some soft stuff here. So I wanted to show you a couple of different ways of applying this. Here, let's. That's why I left this side be. I can do some really nice soft streaks here. We can intensify those like that. And see, so we can get some nice, just flows right down the side of the bow. We're going to do the same thing here on the underside of the, but now we can even stipple it a little bit maybe. And then sort of drag that down to get a bit of certainly a little weathering on our ladder again. And I sort of prefer, I mean, my natural inclination is to do the softer take this brush and do the softer weathering as opposed to the small brush but then there are some of those targeted areas that we want to do now you do have a much that's the difference though between this and the oils is you're going to have a way shorter working time that's that's definitely going to be one of the I don't want to call it a downside, but with the oil washes, you can go back hours later, at least an hour later, and still manipulate what you did. This, not so much. It's going to be a diff different story altogether. All right, let's get some rust effects up here, too. I try to think, well, okay, why is there rust coming down off of this? Because water would collect by this air intake. Trying to think, where would the crew be very frequently? And, and try and think along the lines of putting some chips and rust there. And then you can even layer up your rust a little bit. So here we're gonna put a little bit more with our bigger homemade filbert brush. And it is, it's a very light touch here. You want to make sure you have a light touch with this. And it just it doesn't take very long where all of a sudden you you see stuff like this, the underside of these platforms 
that we didn't do a ton of shading there. We didn't need to do a ton of shading because we're, we were going to cover it up with this rust anyways. So why, why kill yourself doing that? Yeah, let's see if we can't do a little more of these chips along the edges of some of these surfaces. And then in the that final detail phase, that's where we'll maybe get a little bit of skin tone on some of the crew. Again, you don't have to. It's not necessary. It's how much detail you feel like you need on your fleet. At the windows, I probably will get in there and get some more blue on those off camera because it's just impossible. I tried uh, off in between filming, I tried to get my snoot in there and see if I could actually paint that on camera. It's just too difficult. And it, it's going to be that way with some of these just by their nature because of the there's just so many things sticking out on these guys. Now I think this will be a this little rust combination here. I can't wait to try this now on on some vehicles. I think it's going to be really fun. And I know just a lot of people have GW paints around for one reason or another. And I think I've even seen it, well, especially on some of the bolt action pages. Well, okay, what's the, you, you're using Vallejo's, what's the GW equivalent of that? Well, now you kind of have that. Maybe even the, the next one when I do the, the Minesweeper, we'll use this combo again. And maybe even on some of the Soviet fleet too. And if it starts to look too orange, you can always you add a little bit of the green to it. Let's see, we we add some green. Now it turns more of a brown. We just we change that pretty dramatically just by adding a little bit of that green. Here, let's see if we can't add some. Now, like I said, you do the the sponge technique, you get a lot of little tiny dots. Yeah, this will work too. And just looking to use this slightly darker rust in a few places. And then just some of these subtle long lines like this that you don't really even notice. Now the one thing we we did do on the Corvette we had some almost semi-opaque rust and I'm going to try and do that here. So we're adding that's a little bit of that screaming skull. The idea is to make this a little more opaque so to keep it from getting pink I'm adding some of that snake bite leather. Let's see what we get here. All right, that's on, it's on screen for you. So now, see it's a little more, it's a little more opaque, a little less transparent. And we're just gonna do things like this so that, that maybe the rust, it's not always coming from the, the gunnel there, maybe from a few other sources. It, is in port or whatever is rubbing up against the the dock and some of the paint scratched away that sort of thing 
Now let's see if I'm going to try and get this one step lighter here. We'll see what we get because my I, my plan is right here over this darker bit of the desert. Yep, that's what I was hoping to do. So see, we have the dark on the light. Now we've got some of the lighter rust over the dark. We're going to do some of that over here. It's one of my favorite little tricks to fool around with. Because as much as the those rust streaks help to set some of the lighter colors towards the background, doing the lighter rust like this helps to set some of those darker colors more towards the background. And we're doing that right there. And here's another good example of it right in here. Just like that. And certainly, wherever it's dark like this, there's a. We don't want to get too light with it, but rust can actually be a very light color. It's not always just dark over light. If you check out, like I said, I'll try and in the description link up a few of my other tutorials, especially things like the the Flampanzer and my those those objective markers that I made. I was painting those. I think there there could be some interesting ideas there for you to see. That was where you'd also see the secret weapon paints kind of in full view. Alright, let's do some more of the lighter rust along here. There we are. I had a just it happens that a lot of these portals ended up where the darker part of the dazzle was. And now this is where we're going to get some light rust down in here. Oh, I think we need a couple of streaks there too. trying to actually just avoid putting a lot of rust on the guns. That's probably not the best place for it. I'm just going to say that. Now if it's a, you get a sub or something like that where that gun is now submerged for a fair portion of time, that's a little different story. Yeah, let's get ourselves a little bit of our rust on this forward platform here. And we've got decent amount of activity on the masts too. Let's see if we can't get some of this lighter rust at the base of the funnel here because if you check out the secret weapon rust colors it goes all the way from that old rust which is a sort of a deep reddish brown all the way to I think it's yellow rust and it is about the color that I'm using here all right, we should certainly get some in this area too that so we've pretty successfully weathered our riposting boat. And at this point now we're just refining things. So I am going to, in the next segment, actually we're going to be taking some of this rust color because it's pretty close to our skin colors. Let's see what we can do on the crew and get just a little bit of colors on them too. So that, like I said, that's relatively, that was a pretty successful experiment there. 
So now we're going to, I might uh, actually get the camera more closed in, uh, shoot it in maybe one or two levels in a, in a zoom, and then we'll see what we can do on our crew here. So we'll be right back with that. So let's see what we can do to finish some of this off. Now, looking at the picture and some of the references that I had, actually in the uniforms you had a little bit of a light grayish blue. So I'm actually going to take some of the the Viadin blue here, mixing up with that Fenrisian gray, and we'll put that on some of the sleeves here. Maybe even some of the gun barrels. And I also noticed that the gun shields, they were a, a lighter color, so I'm going to add a little more light to those as well. So there where you've got the, the pants, trying to get a little bit of that lighter blue there. And as far as the skin color goes, well, I can just take that rust color because it's pretty much what I normally would use as a skin tone. Just we'll mix a little bit of the probably screaming skull with it, I would say. Here, I need a little more Leviathan blue, knock that down. And as I said, if you're not quite so comfortable mixing the contrast paints with regular paints, this way you don't necessarily have to. I just enjoy that, that semi-translucent feel. That's me. Presents me with a lot of different options. And I, I, like I've said all the way through this, however much you want to refine this, you know, for me, I would certainly spend a couple of more hours at least doing those refinements, making something have a little more depth and color. You know, like this blue that you see me, this bluish gray, this would probably go in several more places. See even here maybe a little bit on these boats. It just it breaks things up a little bit. So not everything is exactly the same color. Now, as far as the skin tones go, just real quick. There's, there's some of our rust. I can even take a touch of my blue here. And as we always do, we do the skin test. So you can see that's not a shabby skin tone already. Now there's going to be a little bit of a mast in the way. I'm trying to rotate that around. So you can see there we go. A little bit of the skin color there. Especially on your bridge staff right here. That is important. Gun crew is a little more difficult because they have their there's just so much right up against the those AA weapons. It's hard to get at their faces. Easier just to hit the helmets. Now here, a couple of guys, we can do a little bit more with the skin tones on them. Then I'll go back to my... I was surprised when I looked at the reference. I said, wow, you know, the... Instead of that darker color, the weapons are actually on the lighter side. So I was a little bit surprised by that. I had to make an adjustment. Now, who knows? The one reference that I showed you, there was no dazzle on the ship whatsoever. That black and white photograph. And this is where I like to just go in and maybe put some other types of streaking in there too that's not only just rust vehicles you see this a lot an awful lot now back to some skin tones see if I can 
And I'm trying to make this where you can see it. This is not easy. There's a lot of things sticking out from just about every angle here. All right, a little more of the Leviathan blue, some of my darker gray. And I'm just trying to get some parts of the uniforms here. And then even more bits of that gun mount. Now let's grab some snake bite leather here. I'm just going to try and make some brown on the life vests here. It's really easiest to see it on the command staff here. So we'll just we'll do it on the bridge bridge crew. And yeah, this guy here you can can see him fairly well. The metal crew like this sometimes things get a little fuzzy. There's parts where I can't quite tell is that flash or is that supposed to be there? Gonna put a little bit more planking in some areas here. And it's pretty simple. It's just a little quick brush stroke here and there. Can you, ah, okay. So we'll just put a couple in there. Couple in here. What would be interesting, if you were thinking of this as, say, operating in the, the Baltic Sea or whatever, you know, it's offering some any aircraft support around a, say an assault on crunch dot or something like that or in the in the North Sea it could be interesting to put some snow and ice on this that could be really interesting of course you'd have to get some crew guys trying to hack that stuff off of there so it doesn't get too hop, top heavy and heel over I think of it you know, snow piled up on these guys and icicles hanging down. Bumps. Ah, well, okay. That is maybe that's something that needs to be done. Sir, oh, maybe on the Russian. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's a plan. <laughs> we'll do that on the Soviet ships. We'll get some snow and ice on them. Because they're certainly operating in an area where you would have that going on. Baltic, North Sea, yeah, I'm gonna, I gotta try that. I think that would be really fun. It would certainly set it apart from my Italian Navy. Sunning themselves in the warm Mediterranean. And your Kriegsmarine and Soviets fighting it out. In the bone-chilling waters of the Bay of Finland or whatever. And a couple of streaks. All that stuff helps to break up that your camo pattern here. Let's do right about here. I, I like this. Here I want to get another one of those somewhere else. Especially since we're close up. So, so I just use the side of the brush like that. And then I'm going to kind of subtract some of that away. And then just sort of blend that in. And you see me using more and more of that Fenrisian gray. I am still mixing it with the Screaming Skull, but I, I want to get some more blue in here just like I did just like I did on the frigate oh, on the corvette sorry gotta indicate a little bit of natural some kind of sunlight or just the well 
I think where these guys are operating, the water is going to be more of a dark grayish blue at best. So I think that we have a plan now for episode three of Cruel Seas. We are going to not just have maybe even three and four, depending if I keep going with the Soviet and Kriegsmarine. I mean, they're both going to be fighting each other. That could make for some interesting terrain, too. Some snowy islands or, heck, maybe even some small ice flows or something. Yeah, I love it when a plan emerges like that. So you saw we now we have a little bit more of a transition there. We're going to do some of that here. Now let's Speaking of blue, let's take some Leviathan blue. Where's a spot that I can put this where you can see it? I'm going to go here. And the idea is I'm going to see what I can do on these windows here now that we're into the final details of this. Yeah, that's not enough of a sky blue. Let's see what I can find here that maybe will do something like that. Well, actually, I'm going to try this. It's not a contrast paint, but still just a little bit of it here. See if I can't make a sky color by taking that Fenrisian gray and that together. Are we on camera? Yep. Ah, that does it. Yeah, it now we have a more of a hint of blue on our windows here. And then we need to get them a little more white. So, oh good, that's where you can see it. And now we get a little separation. That's why I had to make sure I didn't go too crazy adding lighter colors to the steel over the the front of the bridge area so now those certainly stand out a bit more gonna do his field glasses there his binoculars going under the upper reaches of these housings. Even here on parts of the gun mount and crew. Let's go even a little lighter here. on the ends of the oh, probably not yeah, I don't think those are auto cannons I, I, again I don't have the weapon sheet in front of me it's just it's more focused on the painting itself this time I know I always like to discuss the strategery and how you're going to use things in games So before this gets to be three hours long, I'm, I'll say thanks for watching this. I hope these are helpful for you and maybe give you some different ideas because other folks can, they can do the, well, we're just going to hit them with the airbrush and then we'll use this oil wash here and there. Just maybe trying to present you as many different options in case, well, you don't have this or this is what you got or you can't get this. Always trying to think, well, what new way can I go about painting these guys that maybe other folks will have an easier time doing and, and trying to keep the cost of the materials reasonable
to say the least. So thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys watching. You know, you do the do a like or subscribe. I guess the the bell notification thing that'll let you know when I'm doing one of my live sessions. And I think after Gen Con, I'm gonna try and do some. I think my Italian Bersaglieri that I was actually gonna do one part of it with contrast paint, like maybe half the units with that and then the other half with oils so we get that sort of direct comparison so that would be really fun been dying to paint my bursaglieri for like a year they've been sitting there and prepped but anyway thanks for watching this little video here on the verposten boot much appreciated and i will catch you again as we maybe we winterize some of our boats that is something i have not seen but you're going to see it next. So I'll catch you on the next video.